Greetings, ladies and men gents, and welcome to this narration of the web series The Nature of Predators. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 48 Memory Transcription Subject Captain Calsum, Krakotl Alliance Command Date at Standardized Human Time, October 17, 2136. Renewed energy surged through my veins as the fleet coasted within striking distance of the human armada. This was the most important skirmish of our lives. The Terran forces were a ragtag bunch consisting of primary cluster of recycled Vendel ships, a few of their own slow behemoths, and a handful that looked too small to host a proper crew. Our homogenous warships had the advantage of both conformity and technology. Scans of Earth offered some interesting insights as we registered several million life signatures in underground structures. I confirmed on this idea with the fleet, and we agreed to nail those havens first. Human bunkers were not designed to withstand direct antimatter blasts. Once their key hideouts were demolished, major population centers were the second priority. Orion advance, ready our plasma guns for the Terran formation, I chirped into the comms. Follow this five seconds later with a generous donation of missiles. Everyone will fire on my mark. The radio crackled to life with a reply. How certain are we that we can defeat these predators? It is a simple math equation. We'll all act together, and we have more guns than they have ships. The Terrans held their position as we coordinated our target blocks. Jala aimed our railgun at the gargantuan warship, which already registered five others pinpointing it. Overkill wasn't the worst idea. To ensure that the largest of enemies didn't survive, my senses warned that our fleet was being target locked in return and a spurt of munitions were second from impact. Ah! I screeched. The light show around me was a marvelous sight, with energy beams zipping between us and the humans. I watched as our targets were sundered by various incisions, capping off the largest threat before it began. Other predator craft fell to the sheer onslaught, their numbers couldn't hold a candle to ours. We sustained some damage to our front lines, though many vessels that were hit by the enemies were able to press on. The ships we selected to lead the way was the first Sol armor heavy vessel by design. They didn't pack as much in terms of weaponry, but they could absorb more force than the standard craft. In other words, those craft shielded the rest of us. The surviving human vessels were either nursing grave wounds or had pulled off lucky evasive maneuvers. I estimated that we'd taken out 40% of our opponents with the first strike. The other fronts must be enjoying similar success. The Krakotl fleet wasn't showing any mercy and showered missiles at the predators. The hominids left a trail of interceptors behind them, desperately trying to muster some fight. This is almost unfair, ganging up on such a primitive species. No wonder they wouldn't engage us directly. Maybe it was as much pragmatism as it was cowardice. The enemy pilots seemed to realize that they were falling back towards Earth's atmosphere. They had no choice but to turn and fight, or surrender orbital supremacy. Our allies were encouraged by their concession. We charged forward with a righteous determination. I could feel my own crew's qualms about battling predators dissipating. I tossed my beak for emphasis. Don't let your guard down. Predators will try anything if they're desperate enough. Sir... The smaller craft are shooting kinetics and plasmas at us, while charging at max speed. Uh, thing is, I'm not detecting any life signs, Jala chittered. Have the humans found a way to hide from our sensors? They might be concealed in some bunkers. Confusion rippled through my plumage. I doubt even humans made advances against technology they barely understand. The pilots could have just ejected and left the vacant ship on a collision course. You didn't listen to what I said. The craft are still firing on us. And making course corrections. There has to be a pilot, she protested. My talons tightened around my perch. Those Terran ships didn't seem to be steering on a preset course. Before my eyes, one of them whirled out of the way of a plasma beam. It performed a total thrust reversal and a dime. I didn't know how anyone could calculate that fast, or how the lapse in gravity would cause the pilot to pass out. How the G force would crush the organic skull. While predators in movies were high and high and killable, that was not reality. Those maneuvers were impossible. The only conclusion was that these spacecraft were flying themselves and killing based off of some sort of algorithm. How could a computer even learn strategy? And even if it could, 
you would risk implementing that function into its programming. I leaned over the comps. The smaller craft are fighting without human input. I believe they're ordered to crash into us at max velocity. Focus on them. Hundreds of railguns pivoted towards the threat, and a slew of missiles greeted the pilotless craft as well. If our readings were correct, these robots seemed reliant on nuclear power. The plasma jets unleashed at close range were tied to those systems. The humans had skipped right into inflicting most damage possible. A single hit burned through even the four-sol ship's hardened exterior. It's actually quite clever to not have to worry about losing pilots. They don't have to fuss over containing reactions from weapons or expending power on life support. The Terran automatons were decimated when we managed to connect, but they reacted quickly to our threats. We had to focus multiple warships on a single one to make sure it couldn't calculate us to death. Several reaches their targets and rammed those first into the armored front line. Our hardiest ships took significant losses. The humans were determined to take them out of the equation. Jala singled out an aggressive predator vessel and provided suppressive fire for our allies. We advanced deeper into their territory, knowing human fervor would render them reckless. The crater pocked moon passed alongside us, a landmark of our goal. Defense satellites minced us with lasers and gunfire, but they were idle targets to be taken out. The predators were retreating in gradual increments, and their scattered formation was on the brink of collapse. These stalling attempts, inventive or not, were futile. In a few thousand kilometers, we could commence the orbital bombardment. So the humans are broadcasting a message fleet-wide. Should I discard it? The human officer asked. I sighed. Let their last words be heard. It's their right thing to do. Federation fleet, we advise you to turn back now. We took the liberty of informing the Arxor of your departure. The audio transmission had no video, but the booming voice was jarring even without visual. If you return now, you might arrive in time to save your planets. You'll need the artillery you're going to expend on Earth. We will accept your surrender and allow you to return unimpeded. The stunned silence swept across the bridge. Every crew member was undoubtedly recalling their home and the people we left behind. Nishtal was our birth planet, a marshy paradise with floating cities and breathtaking algae blooms. It didn't surprise me that the humans would guarantee it fell alongside Earth. That was predatory spite. But the thought of returning to Nishtal to see every stilt tower and ceremonial nest obliterated cracked a small piece of me. That wasn't even considering how the Arxor would ravage our population. What egotistic predator didn't take prizes of its hunts, after all? Friendly radio chatter cropped up again. The Arxor are coming for us. I'm sorry for listening to one of those fiends, but we have to save our homes. She's right, another captain agreed. Shouldn't we at least send a part of the fleet back? We never should have left Nishtel unguarded. Take heart, my friends. The humans are bluffing. We have them scared crapless. I didn't believe the primates were fibbing, but this mission had to be finished, whatever the cost. Do you think it's possible to talk to the Arxor? The predators want to manipulate our empathy and use it against us. The last part was true, though I found it improbable that they'd stake that wager on a falsehood. The Terrans hoped they could wield our compassion for our brethren against us. They probably understood how we felt, seeing our homes vulnerable and under attack. This was a cost I could barely find the strength or logic to commit to. Odds were, a few hours wouldn't make a difference on the scale. Our fleet would be disorganized and short on ammo whether we accomplished the objective or not. The question was whether or any species could survive through our sacrifice. But what if they are telling the truth? Came the retort across the Federation channels. I lowered my eyes. Then we'll be out of here in a few hours. If the Terrans survive, they will just join forces with the Arxal. Humans are untenably violent, and they'll want revenge. There is no choice but to eradicate Earth. The fleet rallied behind my words, finding their conviction restored. There was nothing to stop the humans from following our subspace trail and unleashing their retribution on our cities. It was far too late now to walk back any attack. Predators didn't forgive or relinquish grudges. The first bomber group barreled towards the line of Terran ships, who were behaving strangely. I watched as they backed away and left massive gaps in their formation. Why were they giving our vessels a pass to break through? Either they were extraordinarily cocky, or anticipating our surrender, or this was a trap. Thousands of missiles slammed into our craft seconds later, 
hailing from the direction of their moon. The explosive demolished any ships they touch. I was stunned to see radiation amidst them readings. These items should only take one ship without shockwaves, but the missile's contact numbers half of our vessels. That fact that the Predators stocked that many nukes on Luna. Why do humans have such an oversized supply of city killers? What reason could they have to point them at their own world from above? Deploy missile countermeasures, I shrieked into the comms. Destroy every structure on their moon. I'm sure that has to be the last of it, but... Just as the Federation fleet began compensating for the nuclear deluge, the humans deployed another staggering missile wave. The salvo was also in the thousands, begging the question just how large their atomic cache was. No wonder our scientists thought the apes eradicated their world. It wasn't for lack of trying. Jala spotted a military complex near us and dropped an antimatter bomb onto the lunar coordinates. As much as I hated to waste extermination supplies, I didn't question the necessity of stopping the nuclear assault. Every bomber who forged ahead was getting buried in radioactive warheads. They were only so many explosives we could shrug off at once. The Terran defenders camped by the orbital threshold, honing plasma at anything that moved. Thousands of our ships had succumbed to the mind-bogglingly missile count. We were still trying to swat the remnants away, with our numbers whittling down. The humans smelled blood. Our attack force suddenly seemed to be a bit more manageable. I flapped my wings in irritation. We have to find a way through the wall, and quickly. Any suggestions, Jala? Well, sir, there is a small gap by the northern polar cap. The predators are overextended, my sociopathic second replied. I blinked. Good thinking. That is where we can break through and pick our mark. My mind wandered as I relayed assignments. The first item was delegating our quickest ships to rush through to the enemy opening. Our entire lead bombing unit was atomized, so the swift cruisers were the obvious replacement. I figured the humans would try to stop any advance. The second our people started moving, we needed to block the predators from sealing the gap. Earth looked depressingly beautiful as I studied the viewport. White clouds formed a veil over tan landmasses, which were divided by rich oceans. I was relieved that the skirmish was almost over. Savages or not, it was impossible not to feel sorry for the humans. There was an exquisiteness and wonder in what they had built. And I knew there were plenty of us left to get the job done. It's been an honor serving with each of you. Let's finish this so we can all go home, I croaked over the comms. Federation cruisers bolted towards the vacant space in Terran formation and pushed their engines past recommended limits. Our warships joined the masses surging forward. The walls rattled as we careened to position. The non-essential ships formed a metal shield between the cruisers and the humans gunning to intercept them. An angular Terran behemoth sauntered towards us, not even slowing down as we hovered in its path. My nav officer took evasive maneuvers and ducked in their uncontrolled plasma and missiles. The humans weren't taking the time to aim. I could almost hear the predators begging us to stop, and guilt tugged at my heart. The massive ship launched dozens of smaller craft from its hangar bay, but they were spliced up by our kinetics on arrival. Those scrawny fighters were easy pickings for us. The spacecraft carrier found itself target-locked by a murderous Jala. The female Krakotl showed no emotion as she directed a missile through their hangar, circumventing its armor. Yes! She leapt up with enthusiasm as the Predator's ship erupted into pieces. It's funny, isn't it? We're blocking them from getting the real target, and these humans are forced to watch. An appropriate somberness overtook the bridge as the rest of us processed her words. There was nothing amusing about what we were slated to witness. It was difficult to remember that it was just business. Fifteen Federation cruisers slipped past the humans with the timely help of Allied fleet. They crossed the final kilometer to orbital range and scoped out the exposed planet below. I watched the Predators flung everything they had at the attackers, knowing full well that they were out of reach. Time seemed to freeze around us. This was the moment that would reside in my nightmares. The payload struck home after a painstaking eternity. Bright flashes dotted Earth's continents, and the antimatter purification wiped away our first human targets. End of chapter.
I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons and channel members. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, it's difficult to pronounce, Lord Arishakal, Dragzoon, WRE, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.